Hello and welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. In this video, we'll discuss about the state machine with events design pattern. So design patterns are the common solution to common occurring problems. So you can use these design patterns to develop any kind of application. Now let's begin. Uh, if you have seen the another video from state machine, in this channel, uh, you will recognize that the state machine is a sequential kind of application. Uh, but in some cases, you might want to develop the application in which uh, you don't actually need the sequential process, but the application should respond according to the user's desire or like a user's interaction. So in this case, I'm building the enum. Uh, I have got like a three states. Uh, starting with initialize followed by main idle or wait for events now uh, why i'm putting these three letters over there is depending upon the developer the developer might choose to use the specific word for that one uh, it can either be called the main idle or wait for events now uh, this is very similar to the state machine uh, we have built before in this same channel please look into the state machine in this uh, YouTube channel to understand more about the state machine. Uh, now the difference between the state machine and state machine with events is one of the states in the this design pattern is going to contain the event structure. So let's uh, write the simple code here. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a random number. So I'm going to put the stop button to stop my application. So that will be my generated value. So the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a copy and then go to the next state immediately after that. So my next state is going to remain idle or wait for events. And I'm going to create a constant over there. I'm going to initialize my indicator. So that will be zero in the beginning. So all the initialization of your APIs, uh, modules, and everything should take place in this particular case. Uh, followed to main idle wait for event case. Now here, like I said, we'll have the event structure. Note that if you are using the event structure, uh, if you don't programmatically like uh, create the notify event for these controls then you won't be able to access the functions of the controls so i'm i'll have like a user interface like this whenever i press generate i should be able to generate the random number between 0 to 10 so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to select generate okay and then i'll put the generate inside the event structure always make sure that your control exists inside the particular event case otherwise uh, it can provide you unwanted output uh, there can be racing conditions the latch button can work like a switch and so on so now like uh, once i've done i'll remain in the same state so that i would be able to read the data now finally what I'm going to do it is I'm going to add event case and in this case is going to be to stop the VI. So I'm going to stop and whenever I press stop I'll go to the stop step. And now I'm going to add one more case after that. So now I've got a stop and then I'm going to create constant. It doesn't really matter what will be the next state but I'm going to put stop to make it more readable and then connect the true constant. So this way my this application is complete using a state machine with events. As you can see I've got three states and initialize I'm initializing my user interface and so on and in the wait for event all these processes taking place and when I press the stop it will go to the stop and stop my application. Now let's test it. So whenever I press generate the event takes place and then it is going to generate the value 
and if I press stop, application stops. So this is uh, the way you are going to use uh, state machine with events. If you have any question, please comment below, like, share and comment on this video and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for future lab videos.